Welcome back to part three. In this episode, I am gonna paint this sucker and get it finished. Welcome back to part three, setting the scene. I'm your host, David. Now, it has taken me oh, nearly two weeks since uh, I filmed this last video to get this ready and prepped and all sorted. I've just been so busy. Anyway, we're ready now, uh, and I'm gonna get the thing painted. So I'm gonna move you off to another area of the channel in a bit, it's just where I paint all my stuff. Um, it's not the best area in the world, but I think it will serve uh, for this purpose. So what have I done since the last video? Other than sand the edges to within an inch of their life, nothing else. Now, I initially was gonna clad the entire, sort of the two, well, the three or four sides of this, uh, but if I'm honest, um, I don't really have the material to do it. And uh, New Zealand is, or Auckland in particular, is still in uh, level three lockdown. So you can now click and collect, but it's just a bit more difficult to get hold of the stuff that I need. So I sanded it as best as I could. It's not perfect, but if I'm honest, you know, it's never going to go into a competition. It's just going to sit on my shelf and here we are. So if I was going to clad it though, I would clad it in Fomex. I talked about this before. It's just a, a like a white uh, foam material that's quite rigid. It's really easy to cut. Um, I would just clad it in that if I'm honest. And I would probably put it on a thicker base um, with like some molding that you get like dado molding and stuff you can get from the hardware store. But uh, again, getting into the shop and uh, picking the correct stuff, just not possible right now. So unfortunately I have to abandon that part of the project, but here we go. So uh, as you can see in the camera there, all I've done is I've just sanded all the edges down with, I started off with a rough grit, maybe 60 grit, and then worked all the way up to I think 214 then. It's not really that fine, but, uh, but still nice to touch. And I think once it's painted black, it won't matter. And besides, you're gonna be viewing it from the front anyway, so it'll be fine. Um, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do off camera, I'm just gonna undercoat this uh, with a gray primer, uh, and then I'm gonna undercoat it with a black primer. Uh, and these were just spray cans I brought uh, from a hardware store, uh, so, so an auto store in Auckland here. It's called Super Cheap Autos. If you're in the UK, you would use Halford's gray primer because it is the best. Uh, and then you can use some Chaos Black Spray or just, again, I used to use uh, black primer from Halford's as well. So um, I'll show you those photos of that done uh, and then we'll get into actually painting it. <laughs> As you can see from my setup, it's quite basic. And I'm just using this car primer to get a really good even coat over this model. I'll end up doing two coats on this just to get a nice even color. And uh, between each coat, I gave it sort of about 10, 15 minutes to dry. And then I came in with the black. And again, two coats, about 15, 20 minutes drying time between each coat. After leaving it to dry for about an hour after the final coat, I move on to the base coating of the model and I started off with uh, Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Grey 71.053 and I did uh, a top down fade essentially starting at the top and then gradually building up the layers. Uh, the paint was thinned 50-50 with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner 71.161 and mixed it about 50-50. So uh, it needed quite a few coats before the, the paint left an impression. 
uh, and then I moved on to the staircase doing exactly the same starting at the front and working back and leaving a little bit of black in the recesses towards the end and that piece of paper there just really helped uh, keep the paint off the recess from the previous step. And then uh, once it had dried, I went back in again, gave it a second coat just to build up the layer of paint with dark sea gray. And then the final highlight was added in the same method with sea gray uh, 71.049. Um, and we left a little bit of the black and obviously a little bit of the darker color and then just kind of hit the, the tops of it really, just kind of getting that really nice gradual fade on each of the steps and the building. And again, the paint was mixed 50-50 with the um, paint thinner and the layers were built up. And I just went back to each section, just topping up the color, making sure I got the fade in correctly. Uh, so it took a little bit of practice, but uh, it worked out real well. I tried to be really careful not to do spots. Some models uh, you see online, people just paint spots of so like a square panel. They'll put a, a spot in the middle of it. Uh, and I really tried to avoid that by uh, putting long strokes in there and getting the fade down. Uh, I then moved on to the grate and that was base coated in scale 75 decayed metal. Just a very rough painting, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but I tried to get as much of it as I could. It's a really great color uh, and has fantastic coverage. I then moved on to the RSJs on the front of the building and that was used with uh, Vallejo, the metal color series, and that was Jet Exhaust 77.1, excuse me, 77.713 Jet Exhaust. Um, this paint flows really nicely. Um, and uh, it took a little while to get in there and, uh, and paint those sections in. Boring work, but uh, it works out. I then painted those little kind of exhaust grills at the bottom of the building there, the same color as the RSJs, just tying the two together nicely. The actual piece was really hard to maneuver because it's quite heavy, probably weighs about six or seven kilos, so it's quite heavy to move around, but, uh, but it was just really important to paint everything that needed to be painted. Uh, and then I just went in with a sponge and again with some scale 75 paint, uh, elven gold, and I just dabbed that in some random pattage just to just to kind of bring out the colour in it. Yeah, then I moved on to the uh, tiles at the back of the building there, started off with Castellian green, and then uh, highlighted up with uh, Strachan green from Games Workshop. It's a really lovely colour, the two together. You can see there the highlight going in, so it just brings that out a little bit. And again, I just covered it all with the uh, Castellan green, then just focused in the middle. And that's uh, kind of made it pop out. I then re-established all of the debris areas with uh, just Vallejo Surface Primer Black. It's a really great color. It's quite thin, so I needed a couple of coats, but we're just kind of reinforcing the the, the rubble and the rocks now.
don't have to be precise here because uh, it's going to get sprayed brown anyway uh, and then we're going to put uh, the snow on afterwards as well so you know as long as you're covering the general area I uh, then fill the road in and then move on to the back of the model where we've just painted the green there Again, the paint's quite thin, so it just gave it a second coat in certain areas that looked a little patchy. You can see I had a little spillage there, so, uh, well, it's a bit of overspray rather. So you can wipe it back because the paint's so thin, you can just wipe it back, but don't push too hard because you'll start to take the paint off underneath. Uh, and again, I used the, um, the piece of paper there just to help me with my lines to make sure I wasn't overspraying too much. No. Okay, and then I move on to painting the rubbled areas with Rhinox Hide from Games Workshop. I love this colour, it's such an earthy colour. Um, and it's really important to distinguish the rubble from the, uh, from the rest of the model because it's, technically it's all grey. But, uh, but getting it brown, painting it brown rather, just, um, it just makes it stand out a little bit. And then when we start to add a bit more... Um, of, of the snow later in the models, it'll just help kind of distinguish the grey from the rubble, which uh, which works really well. And later on, you'll see me pick out a few of these grey rocks with uh, with uh, the lighter grey colour, so the dark sea grey. Sorry, the the normal sea grey, seven one dot zero four nine. And again, I'm just being quite general, not being too specific with this. The more random it looks, the better. Again, uh, I've thinned this paint as well, 50-50 with uh, Vallejo airbrush thinner. And that's why it needed a second coat. Yeah, so this is just sort of establishing the rock. Again, really random splodges here. We're not looking to paint the entire thing. It's just really quick. Uh, it's very tedious work, and that's why I only picked out the, the biggest sort of stuff. And that, again, is to break up uh, the, the brown from the rock. And, of course, you know, that building's damaged, so those rocks would have fallen down and landed in the pile of, of rubble and debris and stuff. So we just picked out uh, a couple of those rocks just again to bring the whole model together. So you haven't got like brown rubble and gray and gray building. So uh, it helps just pull it together. And you can see the brush I'm using there. It's, it's a really, really old brush. It's really splayed and I use it for mainly adding um, uh, powders to model bases. So it's just really rough. You can definitely see in that shot there that how it starts to help differentiate it from the rock. Uh, this now is a coat of uh, gloss varnish, just Vallejo gloss varnish, uh, because we're gonna have to do oil wash now. So uh, there's about two or three coats of this. I was uh, quite, uh, quite general with it, and I used quite a bit of it. It's quite a big model, but uh, it's really important to seal all of the all of the areas so that oil doesn't seep through but as I mentioned at the end I did get a bit of seepage on that far right hand side column so I had to fix that but uh, I'll talk about that later. But again sort of gave it 15-20 minutes between coats. Uh, and this is the oil wash. So this was just Windsor & Newton uh, lamp black mixed really thinly with uh, mineral, uh, white spirits rather. Um, yeah, long, boring work, but uh, it really helps kind of darken the, um, uh, darken the recesses of that building. Some of that uh, 
some of that gloss didn't get into all the nooks and crannies so there's a, a few occasions where it starts to pull so I could have been perhaps a little bit more uh, precise with it to really get it deep into those nooks and crannies but in the end it's not too bad and I'm using a synthetic brush for this there's no point wasting some of your nice horsehair brushes on this just a nice synthetic brush and they're easy to wash out as well and they tend not to degrade as much as a sort of normal horsehair brush would I just go around every single kind of recess. And you can see the capillary action working there. The gloss really helps pull the, uh, the mineral, uh, the white spirit, sorry, uh, around with the uh, lamp blacking. You can see the nice zoomed up, you can see it just filling the recesses in really nicely. Gravity really helped me in this case, you know, uh, it started right at the top and then it just uh, it just pulled all of that wash down. Um, so uh, it didn't it, it didn't actually take that long. And again, I just did the wall oil wash on the steps and all where the flagstones met, um, all over. And I think I even added some on the uh, on some of the rocks just to give them a bit of depth as well. But these were really easy to do. And then moving to the back, just did the back side of the building just to help with some shadows in there. And then just moved on to the floor and did a bit on there as well. Okay, and now I try to add a little bit of black to the, uh, each of those marks, just to kind of represent, represent scorch marks, um, just to give them a bit of depth really. The, the oil didn't really take in them to that much, so I just put a couple of dabs of black paint on them just to help reinforce them a little bit, which, uh, which helped a little bit. And then here I'm just kind of going over a few of the um, through the oil wash lines there. Uh, next I'm using uh, black metal from Vallejo. 
uh, sorry, from scale 75, just to put uh, a bit of withering on there, and just a bit of a highlight rather, just with a sponge. Just helps it a little bit, just helps bring them out. Uh, and then I add a little bit of um, a rust wash from AK Interactive, just to give them a little bit of different color. Straight out of the pot, didn't water it down too much. Um, and this just adds a little extra effect there. One thing I didn't record, unfortunately, I used um, Caribbean Blue from Scale 75, watered down 50-50 with water on the gold grate, um, and that really helped bring out some verdigris in the, uh, in, the, in the plate. Then you can probably see it a little bit in that shot. Uh, it looks fantastic. It's got loads of different colors in there, and uh, it really works nicely. Then I just did a really rough dry brush with black metal um, onto the road section. And then finally, just use a little bit of household paint just to paint the sides because uh, the, uh, the, the spray paint doesn't really like painting on MDF. Uh, and this dries really matte and gives a really lovely uh, dark effect as well. It's what I use uh, in the booth uh, and on the backdrops there. And I just finger paint it on because uh, it, it was really tricky to get that big brush up right up to the top. So I just used my finger and just pushed it into place and had a lot more control over it. Uh, and it dried beautifully. It takes a little while to dry uh, but when it does, it, it, it dries a really good matte black colour. It's great. Okay, I'm nearly finished. Hang in there. Um, I've purposely painted this with a very, very limited colour palette. You know, I've put a little bit of colour in with the gold here on the grate and then across the front of the building with those kind of metal RSJs there. Um, I've painted it very simply as well. I haven't gone crazy with powders and oils and, and weathering texture and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've just kept it extremely simple. So it was just the black, two colours of grey and then the odd different bit of colour. And that's it, pretty much. When I build a board for the channel, I firmly believe that the models are the stars of the show and the, the scenery should, should tell the story, but also it just needs to be that kind of grey, mundane uh, piece of terrain in the background because, uh, you know, it's all about the models and how they interact with each other. So the, the terrain is very much a backdrop. However, I am going to spice this board up a little bit more because... It does perhaps look a bit too drab, but I know this because I was planning to do something else with it. So I talked a lot about this being a hybrid board. So I've built this in the same style as I would normally build my boards. I put, you know, put all the uh, board, uh, you know, like a realm battle board or um, or a piece of MDF down painted, whatever. Then I put the buildings on top. Then I put stone. Then I put sand on top. So I'm going to do the same again. We've already put these bits on here because I wanted them purposely left on the board. So. If I don't put any aggregate on top, it's just kind of, it looks how it looks. But to really make this board stand out with the red and the canicum and the gray of this backdrop, I'm gonna put snow on the board. Now I've done this in loads of videos and you know that my snow is uh, the word for salt. So I'm gonna put salt all over it, uh, push it into the recesses, build up some layers. And then I'm finally, I'll put the Triaris armored conveyor on with the mechanic and going up the steps. So it will completely change the look of the building. But I think as a base, it looks suitably drab um, and quite plain, which is exactly what I wanted. So really happy with how it's turned out. All right, I will uh, time lapse the rest of this and hopefully we'll see a fantastic end result.
that's it then. This is the end of my diorama journey. Um, I think the addition of the lithe elements, which are the additional kind of ch uh, smashed up rock and the salt really helps bind this whole thing together. As I mentioned before, uh, before the video there, um, uh, it was painted extremely simply. Uh, and again, because of the gray background and that sort of thing. But I think it really works. The white really helps draw everything together. And that red of the Mechanicum really helps it just sort of pop out. Um, you may have noticed uh, I included a little uh, demon, uh, uh, demonic beast in the back here uh, to uh, pounce on the Thalax there. So, you know, dioramas are all about telling a story. And so that was my kind of story. You know, we talked about that, you know, that, the, um, uh, an evasion had happened or, or a bombardment had happened and the, and the Mechanicum are racing to either secure a location or a person or a particular piece of equipment. Um, and in this instance, you know, maybe it's just uh, uh, some demons have hit a world and uh, this beast is lying awake for them. But uh, anyway, whatever the story, um, I'm really pleased with it. Overall, uh, for me, it was a great journey. I, there was lots of elements which I wasn't 100% sure going into this. And I think if I'm honest, they've come together really, really nicely. There's a couple of things I would change. Uh, for example, the, the, the MDF is really heavy, uh, but that's not a bad thing. But I think if I'm going to transfer this sort of style of board build into my normal board builds, then this perhaps needs to be built out of... Um, high density foam or something like that, or Foamex like I mentioned, but a lot of work has gone into this. Um, I reckon about 20 hours total maybe. Um, uh, and cost wise, it's cost me about 120 pounds. So, um, uh, you know, if you exclude things like the CNC machine and the tools and stuff, you know, I already had those tools. So I've just utilized the equipment I've got, but it can be built a lot cheaper. Uh, you don't have to have all that fancy equipment. But I'll do a full breakdown of the costs incurred in the description below. I won't go through it all now. But uh, but a lot of it I had uh, already in my sort of garage. So, you know, uh, and a lot of the plastic card I already had as well. So it's not too bad, really. As I mentioned on the whole, I really like it. I'm so glad I made the decision to build the staircase on an angle rather than straight. It would have been a lot easier, <laughs> a lot easier. But it definitely looks a lot better being on the angle. So I'm really pleased with that. I was very hesitant about adding this kind of uh, grate or grill kind of detail on the on the on the sidewalk here, but uh, I think it really helps. It just adds that little extra colour. And finally, I'm glad I went to the effort of putting a tiled floor in the back. Uh, it would have been just as easy just to have just left it plain, but uh, I just felt it needed a different texture in it as well, which is really good. Overall, I'm really happy with the colour of everything. Again, it's that grey, dull, boring background. Uh, with the interest being the models and uh, as I mentioned earlier as well the white just brings the whole thing out. A couple of things which I don't like and I would change about the model uh, over here on this column in particular um, some of the white spirit got underneath the um, the varnish I don't know how it happened because I was quite thorough with it but it got underneath and started peeling paint off and I tried um, I just finger painted it I just got some some of the base colors, the two grays and the black, and I just kind of just finger painted it on. I don't think it's a perfect job, but it would have looked, it looked, uh, it, it looked a lot better finger painting it rather than just getting the airbrush back out. The other option was to completely repaint the top portion. Uh, but if I'm honest with you, I didn't have time. Uh, and that leads me onto another thing as well. Um, there was a lot of drying time. So a lot of time for the, M, uh, for the MDF and the PVA glue to dry. Um, uh, you know, and that took a long time gluing it all together. And so the whole thing took a lot longer. Uh, and I know I've dragged this out over three weeks, so it's four weeks now because obviously I did a 2.5, but it's taken a lot longer than I anticipated. So, you know, back when we go back to all that planning, I tried to plan as much as possible, but, uh, you know, it took way longer. Last two things, really. Um, I had a little bit of curling here on the bottom of the wood so that the, the baseboard slightly curls up towards this end here. Now, the way I could have got around that was I should have built it on 15 mil NDF, so it would have been a lot thicker. And I was going to build like, um, 
uh, like a frame and then put the 15 mil on and then put on. But the whole thing would have just been about sort of, it would have been about this high in the end. And I just thought, oh, I just didn't want to, you know, it's not going into a competition. It's literally going to sit on my shelf now and I'll use it for a couple of photos later on. So I didn't want to invest too much time building the frame and, and that sort of thing. So if I had done it, it wouldn't have curled up so much, but it's not that bad if I'm honest with you. Um, but that, that could have, that would have prevented that from curling up. That wraps it up for me. I'm really happy with my efforts. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this whole process. I know the videos have been really long, but I filmed them in detail because, I, as I mentioned right at the beginning of this series, I, I just felt that sometimes stuff you see online, I find it very hard to follow, and I, and I really want to know a little bit more detail. So I try to go into a bit more detail, but hopefully you haven't been too bored and you perhaps just kept it on in the background and whilst you've been painting or hobbying yourself. So thank you for sticking with me. Um, I've said it probably a hundred times now, I'm really happy with this result and I've learned a lot of lessons which I shall take away and put into the board builds which um, which I need to start building very soon. So, you know, it's all a learning process but uh, I, think I've, I think I've had a really good result which I'm really happy with. Um, I'm going to take a load of photos and I'll include them at the end of this video. They will of course be on social media, Facebook and Instagram, so you can check them out there. Uh, but uh, again, thanks for sticking with me. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, I'm really looking forward now to getting back to filming some battle reports for you guys. All right, we'll see you soon.